Hello Sabre fans, Jimmy from Jimmy Sabre Junk here. I am going to be walking you through the Sabre Bay in Tromnia Hilt. Um, background history as to uh, the design. It was originally concepted by Shane at Sabre Bay. A really crude sketch um, and it pointed out on the hilt what areas of other hilts he would like to put into it. Um, you know his descriptions were very clear and that's kind of how it ended up so his sketch consisted of having an empress empress emperor uh, emitter a Darth Vader style shroud uh, a Count Dooku grip area around here with a trigger it's rubberized grip maul like area here if it's not too shiny hopefully you can see it this area was very reminiscent, I believe very reminiscent of Mace Windu's lightsaber. And then the pommel itself is very Kylo Ren, even with the cap on the bottom, the shape of it. And then we have this Swiss cheese part here, which is very reminiscent of Ventress's hilt that she gets once she loses these ones. So Shane concepted it, uh, Sam at Shadowfall Props jumped on the initial design, uh, they encountered a few problems, um, it couldn't be made, it wasn't installable or you know installable with your standard parts anyway. Um, so then I took over and redesigned it, scaled it all up, broke it all back down again and re-engineered it entirely. And what we have here is a really solid hilt, beautifully weighty as well. Oh, it's great, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, the upper part is very easy to assemble. Uh, these are spring-loaded spring -loaded translucent plastic plungers right here, which actuate the switches on the chassis. And the way I've de de designed the chassis to fit into the pommel is that once you've got it all clocked up, you won't ever have to worry about the chassis coming out of alignment again. Uh, so you have a clocking mechanism down here, which is this steel sleeve here, uh, that is locked down in, into a specific position you are orientated to by the brass. And what I do is I tend to wrap the brass up in electrical tape that I can grip on a little bit better. So when I get my orientation that I want here, I can get that and then I wrench that down with my hand only, no tools, don't need tools, and then you can keep the orientation that you desire. With these uh, plungers as well, they've got a spring in there, so I also use electrical tape for that, believe it or not, as well. I grab a bit, stick it on my thumb, put the assembly in there, and then I use my thumb and I press it in with electrical tape, the sticky side on this, turning it, turning it, turning it, until it bottoms down all the way. Uh, what we have here as well, we have a brass thumb screw for your blade retention so no tools required nice and easy yeah so this upper half is very very simple uh, the pommel itself is a bit more complicated but um, one thing you'll want to make sure you do if you've got this part here I call this I call this the main like pommel sleeve you want to orientate where one of these bars goes or you have put down already inserted glued double sided sticky tape, whatever to this sleeve, you want it to align with these switches here. Because that's what you're gonna need to orientate your chassis to the right position. So make sure you clock, doesn't matter which one of these bars it is at all, but make sure you clock those bars to line up with the switches, the plungers. So let's go over the chassis. We have a 28 mm base speaker down here. It can take a smuggler's outpost, it's very deep. Uh, we've got a single Neopixel down here lighting up a uh, print of a crystal. Uh, you can use a real crystal if you want to. Equally, you don't have to use a single Neopixel. Uh, you can use one of those new stock uh, rotary accent PCB uh, Neopixel rings. They're, those are really cool. So we have three external wires here, just leading to that area there. The idea of them being external 
is then we're not cutting through or slotting through the speaker itself. It goes around it. It also you can also keep the speaker in traps and it projects sound amazingly well. It's very loud. Um, this battery compartment got an 18650 spring loaded battery tabs. Uh, there is a 21700 version, I believe. I don't have my laptop open at the moment. Um, I believe I made one. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, but if you have the 21700 version, you won't be able to have the OLED in the back. Um, but with the 18650, you've got that option there. High amp kill switch. Uh, I've got a profi board in this one, other boards are available to use in the chassis designs, depending which chassis you get. Uh, stock MPXL switches, make sure you seat those all the way down into the bottom of the pockets that they wire into, you can glue those into place once you're happy and tested. Um, you do have to slot this one in, so angle it in place. And then at the top here I've got a stock V2 short pin and miss a PCB but you can use a V3, do whatever you want to. Um, yeah, that's it. The, uh, before we go any further, one thing you always do after you install your chassis, before you install it into your pommel, test it. So you did. So I did. So, this is the Inquisitor sound font by Jesse at Kyberphonic. Uh, great set of sound fonts that are, that are included in the Tales of the Jedi sound font package by him. Um, I think I've got all of them loaded on here. So test your switches first. See how well that pommel lights up. Or that crystal, which is going to light up your pommel. And then your AUX switch to change. Master Duke. Sound font. Battery is quite low at the moment, so I'm getting a bit crappy. But we'll try another battery. Hopefully, one that isn't super low. You're supposed to be Master Duke. Miles better. Although it's still saying about the same. Maybe just have a little bit more juice. Um, that's another thing guys, If you, I see this a lot actually in the profi board groups, if you get any crackling in your speaker, change your battery, you might just be running low on juice, um, and then once you change your battery, charge your battery, um, you should have better sound quality, get less of that crackling sound. So that's all sorted, lovely, works perfectly, so what we're going to do next is put your fins onto this ring here. Now you get six screws in the box, which you then use those to assemble these fins to this ring loosely. So you see it rattles around. They're not on tight at all. You assemble your fins, your panels onto your emitter sleeve um, using your desired method, whether it be glue, 3M tape, or you don't even have to put them on at all. It's entirely up to you whether you like them or not. Um, I'd recommend free hand tape, but if you want to make sure they never come off again, super glue is obviously going to be a bet, just make sure it doesn't cloud up your aluminium. Uh, this is a really high polish on here, so it's an absolute fingerprint magnet. Um, so on camera, it might you might just get like, glimpses of dirty, oily fingerprint aluminium there, but uh, yes, I don't want to wear any soft gloves, equally I haven't got any, so no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so once you've got those in place, what you do is grab your Swiss cheese Ventress part, drop it in through the center, like so, that's what you want. And then you want to make sure that your switches will line up perfectly with your plunges all the time. And the only way to do that is make sure you clock one of these areas where the panel goes directly in line with your switches. So when you do that, when you've got your steel sleeve down here in the right position and you're happy with it, usually you put this one as well, make sure you can visibly see it, it's all aligned up perfectly. What I do is I wrap this up in electrical tape, the brass section, and I close it, I really close it down while keeping this in the right orientation. 
using my hands only. Uh, electrical tape just there to help grip it a bit more. Um, and then once that's in place and you're happy with the alignment, you don't ever have to do that again. Single setups is the thing that I like. I don't like hilts that you have to disassemble multiple times through multiple different ways to even just get to the chassis. One setup, first time you assemble the hilt, job done. Right, so next. And back and forth. Put your pommel on, your pommel sleeve, sorry. Make sure you've got a black panel aligned with your switches here. Grab a bit of tape, put that down just to mark out where that panel is. Unscrew it. And then what you're gonna do, grab your chassis, make sure the black, the black tape, tape is aligned up with the switches. Pass it all the way down like so and one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to do this by accident because then you can't get back in place without crushing those wires if they're a little bit like springy on the outside of the So you want to try and keep that in line physically as possible as you're doing this assembly. So here's the fiddly bit. You grab this, you use gravity to help you, you get one fin in position at a time. And when I've done the previous videos of this, which are on the Sigma Facebook page, um, I made this look really simple. It went in like the first time. I guarantee it's not going to be that simple again here. Which I don't like editing videos. I like to just put the intros and outros on and not into cuts because then I've actually got to pay more attention. I'm not about that. Equally, not having cuts means you get to see how fiddly the actual process is, how genuine it is. Um, so. Not that I know of anybody else that does it for that particular reason to hide those kind of things, but you know, I'd, I'd rather show you the full assembly as to how I do it in real life. Um, and I have done this a couple of times, so I'm, little, I'm quite well practiced at it. So then you've got them all in position, and you try and slide them down in unison, like so. Cool, happy with that. Right, fantastic, so now, your chassis, when those fins have come down all the way, your chassis cannot rotate to that, that, uh, that pommel sleeve at all. It's one direction. So we're gonna get rid of that tape. And this just, it comes a disaster and all comes undone. We don't need that again. What I like to do is I like to, you know, just press down whilst I'm holding the sleeve to make sure that those fins come down all the way small Phillips head screwdriver, don't drop it, you're going to do up those six screws here whilst this venturous part, the Swiss cheese, is loose. So let's do that together, one, like so, We actually get some screws. Two. Don't have to wrench them down super hard. Um, it just needs to be. Three. Counting with Jimmy. Four. Five. I'm not sure if you can hear that. My missus is playing with my new dog. He's only a pup, he's only a pup. He's a big pup though. Right, so, and then once I've got those down, I just do that press again to make sure everything is all down nice and position. And then you can do up your Ventress Swiss cheese thing by threading it up into the inside of the pommel sleeve. And I use my thumb first, then it gets to a point where you can't use your thumb. And I just turn it by hand through the sides like so. And then that's going that's gone tough on me now. Same Phillips head screwdriver that you'll be able to stick through the ventress holes. I then put it through, just get a little nick up, do it in a couple of different places, just to make sure. See I could get a little bit more out of that. See if I can do 
to another position here. Don't have to go nuts on it. It's aluminium, don't force it. You don't want to ruin it. But that is absolutely robust now. No wobble in it whatsoever. Um, now, this brass Kylo Ren pommel bit, I'm going to thread that in here. Now, you can orientate this how you want to, and it should never really come loose on you as long as you've got a few threads in. The idea is when you manufacture something like this, it's not super precision. Um, if you want a super precision, you'd be paying a lot more than what you're paying for this. <laughs> um, everything is kind of not concentric, and what I mean is that every imagine all of the imagine this is all rings all the way through. When they make something like this, nothing is that concentric all the way through. All of those rings don't line up perfectly. So you might find the concentric concentricity varies in this pommel section alone from 10 to 50 microns. And we use that in a design advantage in that this has a little ring on it that kind of fits quite well in the Ventress. And if it's offset because it's not concentric, it uh, kind of grips it quite well. So I am going to thread this in. Find your threads first. So what I did was kind of use the faults of manufacturing as an assembly agent. I feel it go taut there. So actually, I kind of went a little bit too taut on me, too quick. I wasn't able to get enough threads out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen this up by a smidge. So, just by a smidge. There we go, and get more threads down. So I want this to be threaded down as far as possible, but equally I want it to align. I want the slot here, the brass slot here. I hope you guys can see that. Let me stand up and check. Yeah, yeah I want this brass slot here to line up with one of these fins. Uh, doesn't need to, for any reason other than that's what I want. So I'm turning it by my hand, by my thumb. I'd say that's pretty much aligned, wouldn't you? That would do anyway. I'm not going to get the mic on perfect. Actually, no, that's pretty damn good. Pretty happy about that. Put my finger on the bottom of it and then nip up the Ventress through the sides again. And the concentricity of it. Just hold it all in a specific place. There you go, just like that. All right, and I can't physically turn that now. That's locked in position, so there we go. I use engineering, manufacturing inaccuracies to the advantage of a Sabre's design. That only comes if you actually know how things are made. Uh, lucky enough, I'm, I have eight years of experience of working directly with a shop, a factory in the UK and a factory in Sri Lanka as part of my main job. So, yeah, my experience. Right, happy with that. And then what you can do Slide that in, thread that in, and then check your switch actuation. I hope you can hear that. Of course, if I put background music on there, <laughs> you might not be able to hear it, um, but those work really well. And then what I'll do is I'll shove in, I'll shove in this battery. Ooh. Need to charge my batteries, don't I? Hey, right, thread that up. Look how awesome that pommel glows. You've got your. If I turn this off, you see that better. 
Look at that. Got your plungers lighting up nicely there and that pommel glows beautifully. That's awesome. If I change the sound font. Master Dooku. Got a nice blue there for light side Dooku. Got different colours coming from plungers. I got a nice green there. So using these sound fonts by Jesse at Kyberphonic. I'm just going to turn the light back on. Has it all come back into focus? Yep. That is awesome. Really weighty. I absolutely love the weight of this thing. It's not light. Uh, it's not ridiculously heavy, obviously, um, but the steel in there, the thick aluminium up here to thread these in, the extra aluminium shroud, you've got the brass emitter, brass sleeve, uh, and the brass pommel. It adds so much nice weight to it. Feels amazing. Um, and the rubberized grip up here is lovely. It's, it's a really beautiful hilt to hold. He concepted a really cool design. Um, and there's I can't remember if I mentioned this or in the one I was filming before and then I messed up. Doesn't matter. There's this one which I would call closer to like a light side clan kind of version of this hilt. And then he's also done a batch where all this polished, polished aluminium has been anodized black and it looks sick. It looks like a really cool dark side hilt. Go check them out on the Saber Bay page. These are awesome. Uh, it's a limited run. Go grab them now, because there's nothing else, nothing else at all like this on the market. And then, well, I say that there are plenty of other hills I've got, almost, but this is beautiful, absolutely stunning. And then we've also got a stand for it. I designed a 3D print of a stand. I don't know if he's selling prints or STLs. I can't remember off the top of my head. Should have turned on my laptop and looked before I started filming. Haha, <laughs> but I'm too far deep in. Um, displays your hilt upright nicely and leans, leans against the rubberized grip and it holds on pretty well. Beautiful. Right, there we go. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed my video. This walkthrough on this really bespoke hilt. Um, lots of engineering went into this. Yes, very unique. To Shane, this design belongs to Shane at the Sable Bay. Very well done. Thanks, guys. I hope to see you in the next video. Hit that like button, hit subscribe. Um, that's the first time I've ever mentioned it in these videos. Keep on forgetting. I hope you really, you guys really like my intros and outros because I've got different coloured versions now. Um, done by Brick Walker uh, on Facebook. Did a fantastic job. Uh, I'm really not into these kind of things. I know nothing about these kind of things. Doing intros and outros. He said he get. I gave him a little bit of a rundown and he ran with it and he hit the nail on the head perfectly. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, thanks guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye.